welcome to Spectral Evidence. Tonight we, uh, we're going to do a little something different. Um, Harry's away on a sabbatical. He actually got his third Dewey, so <laughs> he's not going to be around for a few episodes. So I'm going to introduce my substitute co-host, Mike. How's it going? Tonight we have Brian and Tracy from hey. Sci-Fi Saturday, a podcast, right? Yes. I got that correct? It's a podcast. Correct. So tell us a little bit about it. Sci-Fi Saturday Night? Sure. Mm -hmm. It's an hour-long show. You can see it at www.scifisaturdaynight.com. What was that? Oh, it's www.scifisaturdaynight.com. <laughs> it's an hour-long interview show. Uh, we riff on the sci-fi news of the week with our co-hosts, and the second half is always an interview. And uh, we've had some pretty amazing guests so far, people like Harlan Ellison, Ben Bova, Norman Spinrad. Uh, Lance Henriksen was on. We're going to have Doug Jones on again this week. Spider, uh, Robinson. Spider Robinson's been on, and uh, we are listeners all over the world at this point, and we do it uh, here in Manchester, New Hampshire. So, uh, I might have missed it, but what time is it on? What time do you? Well, we tape on Thursday nights, so if you're on Ustream, you can hear it live, uh, but we post it on Saturday nights at 8 at our website, sci uh, sci fi <laughs> So how, <laughs> so how do you get in touch with all your guests? Your guests? Uh, email is a wonderful thing. Oh, so you just... I, yeah. Um, I go out and I just uh, trail the, uh, the web for uh, interesting people to talk to. And I'd say about half the time it hits. Um, and uh, we've built, built up enough of a reputation right now where we've actually got uh, some talent agencies will send people to us on a regular basis now. That's cool. So who has been your favorite guest? Oh, that's Come on. not fair. What? Just... It's between Harlan and Doug. Doug Jones, I think, because he's such a sweetheart. If you've ever gone to a rock and shock or any place where Doug Jones, who's played the Silver Surfer in the Fantastic Four movie, he played uh, the, the pun in Pan's Labyrinth. He was the, the fawn. fawn. And he was the one with the hands and the other one that was down in the pit. Abe Sapien. Um, he's been Abe Sapien. He so basically been he's been every role that you need a skinny. A tall, skinny guy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Guy with not that was Doug. too many manly features. <laughs> and he's very sweet and he likes to hug people. He'll like grab people yes. and hug them. Beware. That's because he's psychic and he can read their minds. So who's been the worst guest? Oh. You can you can let it. You know what? You, get I'll, sued. you know, I'll say you. You don't have to say his name. Just uh, you say a name that rhymes with it. No, I'll take the high road and just say me because I started. That's how uh, oh, we that's got lame. involved. Come on, this is good. <laughs> say it. I. You can. The I'm, two people that watch this show is not going to be upset, <laughs> and my mother's going to be like, "Well, I don't even know who that guy is." So it's, as she's dialing Hollywood, going, "Do you it's, know it's, who they hate?" So come on, who's been the worst? Who's been an absolute? I cannot do that. No, I mean, some of our less professional people are just that. They're less professional. There's, we've had a couple uh, illustrators who they get all excited about coming on, and then when they get on, they're like, "Yep, uh huh." And it's, you know, it's a podcast. You well, that's why, you, that's why they illustrate us. So, exactly. <laughs> and, um, and some other people, we had one particular person from New York City, who I'm not going to name any further, um, was yeah. really... The Trump. The, yeah, we wish we had him on now. Yeah. Um, yeah, his hair, at least, the hair piece. Oh, that'd be Maybe awesome. Maybe the hair piece. But Donald himself, no, but it, we had yeah. this guy from New York City, and he was actually really rude to the staff. <clears throat> he was rude to us when we were interviewing him. So, can really? I say it? So, just say it. It's all right. What's his first name? You can't get in trouble with a first name. How about this? He's a DJ okay. from New York City, and I'll stop there. Because <laughs> we don't want to well, get sued. Wait, no, no. Uh, so okay, it was H.G. Wells. <laughs> really? Oh, and man. I, and it shot my me. image of him, man. It does. It does <clears throat> shatter it. So um, you, co you cover all the genres then? Sci-fi, horror, comics, well, TV, you know, yeah. everything. Um, well, our sort of unofficial slogan is cool stuff we like. That's but right. it's, it's got to have a sci-fi slant to it or, mm -hmm. or some sort of genre element to it. Usually, yeah. Yeah. So what are you guys uh, watching personally right now? Warehouse 13. Yeah, waiting for Fringe Warehouse to come 13, back. Fringe, um... See. What else have we done? Oh, God, there's so much. It's just the problem is you get swamped. There's so much going on. 
Um, I think the big thing that uh, we're going to have to talk about on the show this week is Joe Kubert just passed away yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, one of uh, the creator of uh, Sergeant Rock and Hawkman. I'm actually taking a correspondence course of his right now, and it's like, oh my god. Yep. So I hope you get your money back. I de Oh, oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's dead now. How can you take the class if he's dead? You mean someone else is teaching the class? Yes. Oh. Yes. So you're taking, uh, all right, I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but all right, the things that you just named off is pretty mainstream kind of stuff. I want to know, you know, what can you tell people out there that, hey, go track this down because this is something worth your time. Takashi Miike. There you go. Something in English. <laughs> <laughs> this is Hudson. People are slow. <laughs> well, you yeah. can still get his stuff. No, I'm kidding. No, 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 no. Oh. You can get, um, he's a Japanese director who his two mm -hmm. biggest movies were one called Audition, which is actually more uh. suspense and more just scary. And then there's Ichi the Killer, which is pretty famous because there's more blood in yeah. that movie than, I mean, gallons and gallons and gallons okay. and gallons and gallons of If blood. it makes you cringe. <laughs> I know the stuff you watch. It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> so then, what's your pick? Oh, uh, well, you're just gonna take the easy way out and agree with her. No, no, no I can't no, watch that. Watch no, it, no, 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 no. I watch the gory stuff. She's throwing the H.G. Lewis stuff. I'll walk in and be like, "What are you watching?" G. No, uh, I like uh, good obscure uh, cult films like uh, Forbidden Zone, The Apple. Uh, yeah. Hey, I didn't say they were good movies. <laughs> That's for sure. You can't. Um. <laughs> um, uh, Winter Beast. You know, things that you've got to just... You know, <laughs> uh, obscures, like I mean, cringe. I like the classics. I, uh, you're right. I, I kind of more of a mainstream thing, but I also like the really uh, fun, campy, Ed Wood-style stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, you give me a Ray Harryhausen film fest, and I'm, I'll lock the door. I'm set for a week. Right. How about yeah. the Universal Monsters? Which ones do you like your favorite? Well, the ones in the 30s, not the remakes. I'll tell no, you that no, no, much. not the remakes. Not the <laughs> screw, <laughs> screw the remakes. We're talking classic black oh, and well, white. My all-time favorite would be The Wolfman. I make a point of it. I have to have that movie on when I'm throwing up the Halloween decorations every year. It's, it's like a ritual for me. Because I still cannot figure out where that village is. Because it's, it's, it's supposedly it's an English village. Half of the people talk in it with an American accent, but there are gypsies in carts with cars. And I'm like, wait a minute, where the hell? <laughs> this is like Disneyland. So the more I watch it, the more I'm like, it, this doesn't make any sense, but I love it. It is. It's a classic. It, it is. is. The remake, no. I know. Head issues. And it was okay. Couldn't yeah. watch it. Head issues. Good. And that's why you're cheerful. Because it's it was a terrible movie. No, I just uh, what's the guy who stars in it? What's the? I have no idea. <laughs> you know, he's like Be Benicio del Toro. I can't stand yeah. him. Really? See, I can say I can say who I don't like. Yeah. Say it. Benicio it? del Toro. No. <laughs> <laughs> we, come, I shall whisper it to you. Benicio. Save that for later. All right. Um, <laughs> but I will have to give him one thing uh, on that movie. The makeup for the the Wolfman itself was great. But the storyline... Well, it was Rick Baker, right? Yeah, Rick Baker. Yeah. The, but the storyline, it, it just... It wasn't the same. Yeah. It wasn't the same as the well, old... Well, you didn't feel quite as bad for him. You feel really bad for, for Lon Chaney Jr. Well, yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's a beautiful... But, I mean, again, really? it's, it's the syndrome of yeah. if you're going to remake a movie that's already good to begin with, make it really good. Like, John Carpenter's the thing. The original thing, I love. The Howard Hawks version, it's a great B movie. Mm -hmm. But the remake, I was like, wow. <laughs> I'm like, okay, now that's how you do a remake. We're big fans of Carpenters. Yeah. At least the oh, old they, Carpenter. They build a house. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. She can sing a mean song. She can't make can't a sandwich, know. but she can sing a song. <laughs> that's right. Is that why birds suddenly appear every time we are here? <laughs> okay, speaking of the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got to get this off my chest. Okay. Can um, I love Carpenter's version. Mm -hmm. Always have since the 80s. Okay. The prequel was oh, great. didn't see it. On one condition that all the people out there think it's a remake. It's not a remake. It's a prequel. It's going back to the beginning, showing you how the thing got to the Earth. 
And if okay. you pay attention to Carpenter's version, there's stuff in behind this, the uh, backgrounds. If you're looking in the backgrounds where they're walking through the sets and stuff, you're going to pick that up, how it got there from the prequel. And it shows you. And people oh. just don't get that. Uh, for like one, here's one for you. McCready and the Doctor walking into the, the Swede's place. One of them has a duck on their head. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, the Joker. Norwegian place. <laughs> they go Man to walks on the by, he's got a duck okay. on his head. Yeah, that's right. You know? <laughs> Ah, ha, ha, ha. Roll with it. Oh, come on. <laughs> They're paying us, right? Okay. He's paying you. <laughs> oh, all right. I'm just a fill-in. But anyway, <laughs> they walk down and they see in where pesos. the thing was in the block of ice. Yeah. They show you the axe and the door. Yeah. Well, in the prequel, they show you how that axe got to the door cool. and all that little funky stuff there. So oh, cool. All you people that didn't like it, you can go to hell. Um, <laughs> so... I give it thumbs up. So that's going to come out as all you people can go. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay, so so we're, how do you really feel about it, though, yeah. if they didn't like it? I loved it. I loved it so much. I no, I, I just don't want you to it. hold those feelings in. I yeah. really want you, you just know? to express the way that you feel <laughs> that if people didn't like that movie. You know, just let it all go. Yeah, I think. Just yeah. let it out. It's very therapeutic. No? Nah, I, I wouldn't want to say All that. All right. Okay, cool. I'm sure in 20 years they'll remake that one, too. Yeah. I'm sure they will. Okay. All right, what about upcoming movies? You got anything you look forward to? I'm not sure at this point. What's coming out? Garbage. All right, then. I was really, <laughs> I don't know really why. unhappy with Dark Shadows. Me and the kids You'd were like looking forward to... You'd like me to get on that to... one. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I was, and I'm a, I was a devotee of the, of the original TV show. I'm pretty old. And I saw, not only did I see it when I was a kid, we re-watched it when, when Sci-Fi Channel was showing every single episode oh, 1, of Dark Shadows. Oh, 1,228 And we watched every single episodes. episode. And we really got hooked on it. It was yeah. fun, you know, because when it was really good, it was amazing. Although when it was really bad, we'd be like, oh, the, the writers must have been on strike this week. But um, the remake just, uh, it was blah. It sucked. <laughs> it wasn't even yeah. bad enough to suck, though. That's my problem. Yeah. Is it wasn't, if it was going to go for really, really bad, it could have, and it could have been even fun. But it wasn't, and it wasn't good, and it wasn't bad. It was meh. And to me, that's the worst you, a movie can be, is meh. Yeah. Well, come on, Tim Burton plus Johnny Depp equals suck. But he did add wood. I love wood. I'd give Tim, yeah. Tim Burton did some all right things. Uh, one, Sleepy Hollow. Oh. That was a great one. I, I like Sleepy Hollow. All right, I, I, I like Sleepy Hollow. I like Sleepy Hollow. No, no, like You're Sleepy outvoted Hollow. on that one. No, the only good thing you know about what I like, that one. You know what I like best no. about Sleepy Hollow, though? It's not the storyline. It's the it's the sets and the atmosphere that he did mm. create. That's yes. what I liked about yes. it. Mm -hmm. I, I could give I I could care less about Johnny Depp as Ichabod Crane. Right. You know, although. Um, so it's best what's seen his with face the sound as, off? What's his face as uh, the Headless Horseman, though? Christopher Watkins. Christopher Watkins, come on. Yes. Yeah. Psycho. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I just like that movie. Be if the, the thing I'll give it is that it brought back Christopher Lee. He hadn't done yes. anything in ages, and then he, and now he's he did everything. that, and people suddenly were like, oh, yeah, Christopher Lee is still alive. Yeah. Let's put exactly. him in the Star Wars movies. Let's just give him, you know. Now he's everywhere. Yes, it's awesome. No, you should have him on the show next dies. week. <laughs> What's that? You should have him on your show next oh, week. I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got a mouse in your pocket. He's sitting here one day on the chair, and he's like, hey, we're going to get him back here. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to get him on the horn and get him over here. It's all right. Hey, you know, yeah, Christopher Lee is, you know, the king. Uh, yeah. Those old Hammer movies, everything, you know. Great. You got to love it. Yeah. But all right. That was one Tim Burton, and, and I do like mm -hmm. Nightmare Before Christmas. I'll, I'll admit, you know. Yeah. That you was know, the theme that, of our wedding. Yeah, anything yeah. with the, like, that stop, <laughs> you know, animation. You know, the kids and I, we're looking forward to Paranormal, uh, Paranorman. How about Frank and Weenie? And Frank, you. Frank and Weenie, they're much better. Yeah, but you got to admit, there's nothing original in Hollywood anymore. Every movie I do you, admit that. you is coming out, it's either a remake or it's just a rehash of a movie that was already made before. I and agree. there's nothing. 
Oh, I don't know. Well, that's with original horror movies. This one's a little older now, though, but there's a movie out of New Zealand called Black Sheep, and that was one, oh, last, yeah. that was one of the last really oh, good, man. fun horror movies that, that I've seen. Was, yeah. About was giant, oh, mutant, oh, my God. cannibalistic sheep. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and they got the guys from Lord of the Rings to actually mm. do the animatronics in it. See, I heard it was bad. Oh. <laughs> oh, boy. That, it's a really fun movie. If you haven't seen that one, track that one down. Black sheep, huh? Black, Black sheep. sheep. Oh, blood-sucking freaks. Hey. No. No, 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 no. I hate that movie. Oh. Why? For shock value and, you know, just... It's, you know what it is? It's Wait a second. It's cutting off of the ballerina's feet. That bothered me like I can't even tell you. The scariest thing in that movie you is the midget with the afro. No, I don't. I don't know that one. You do. All right, let's skip to the chase. We got a bunch of stuff here on the table. All right. Well, all right. Let, well, I was going to get to that. Okay. You know, uh, you know, the movie tie-ins. You know, you actually have a bit of a claim to fame for movies. And let's hear it. Let's talk about it. When I was in college. Um, Oh yeah, keep going. <laughs> I know it was a you long time this, ago. You had this roommate, right? No, 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 no. When I was in college, I, I was actually dating this guy. Yeah, I know my husband doesn't like to hear. I was hey, dating this guy, uh, and I thought it would be a really great present because I heard George Romero was going to be coming in to make another zombie film, and I actually wrote him a letter because their offices were in Pittsburgh, in Pittsylvania. Just in case anybody's watching from New Hampshire, well, all right, Pittsburgh, the real Pittsburgh. <laughs> And um, I wrote him a letter and I said, we'd really like to take you out to dinner. I think it would be a very, it, it would be great. It, we would be honored if you would let us do that. And instead, and I still have it, he sent me a two page letter and he said, we're gonna be too busy, but if you call this number and ask for these people, I will get your roles in, you, you guys can be zombies in the next movie. So needless to say, I did that um, as soon as I could, which was really funny because I found out that we got accepted right after I had had some wisdom teeth pulled, so my mouth was already kind of swollen. And I thought, oh, I'm perfect into the role. And we got to be extras in Day of the Dead and got down there and spent the whole day. We had to be there at 5.30 in the morning. We didn't leave till 7 o'clock at night. Um, I actually got to be on screen. Mm -hmm. um, excuse me. And my arms in a couple books that we have. I brought some of the photos. Are they photos. still attached to you? Yes, they're still attached to me, but the guy's head that we were grabbing wasn't. So there's a scene in the movie where um, the acto, actor Tasso comes running around and he falls on these pallets. And as he falls back from the pallets, the zombies go after him. They pull his head off and walk off with his head. And I was up in the corner. We actually grabbed onto the fake head. As, and I really felt bad for the actor because they had built it up. They, we did the scene where we started to grab his throat. And they had built it up, and they had Savini come over, and he literally had to lay flat with his head like under him for a good hour. And they had to put oxygen on him and everything because he couldn't breathe. But then they had the fake head so that we could grab it. And if you listen really closely, I actually got my fingernail stuck under one of the, the bits where they use the, the special cording to make it look like the neck's falling apart, and it ripped my fingernail. <laughs> Um, so I screamed. I think I'm a zombie. I can scream. So I screamed. And then that was our big claim to fame. But the most important thing out of that whole story was zombies like a little head. There you go. <laughs> and that's going to be go. edited out. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's awesome. That's awesome. It, it, it's cool when, you know, you admire somebody and you get to have that little bit of, you know, who, who doesn't love Romero? If, you, if you're in the horror movies, right. you got to, you know, you got to respect what he's done. I mean, he's the one that's created it. In know? Pittsburgh, it's kind of a, a right of honor to have been one of the Romero zombies. So, and this, this is what we got. We got our hats, and we got one dollar, and that's what everybody got for being a zombie. Did that's you frame the dollar? I, did, I, I had it for a long time. I think it's in a scrapbook somewhere. I was an extra in Day, in Day of the Dead. I was a zombie. See, that just shows you how old that movie is, too, because Pain uh, is Cap. When was the last time no you saw kidding. Pain is Caps like that, huh? Hey, you want yeah, guys really. to go check out Def Leppard after this? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. What year was that? 19... It, came out, it came out in 86. We did 86. the movie in 85. 
It came out in 86. And it, the funny thing about that is, without going into too much detail, I'd been down in Virginia at the time when the movie came out, and I went to go uh, get my ticket to go see the movie, and they were trying to tell me you had to be 21 to get in, and then I had to show my driver's license to actually get in to see the movie. Wow. When was the last time you got carded to actually get into a horror movie? <laughs> uh, Predator, me and him. <laughs> yeah. I had to have my father buy the tickets. <laughs> Yeah, that's how uh, bad that was. See? See? And what year was that? that? That was, see, we graduated in 89. That was so 87. 87. And that will be so edited. <laughs> wow. But we've gone down. We've met George a few times since. Um, and when they had a big Day of the Dead, Dawn of the Dead convention down at the Rock and Shock at Worcester, uh, we met Lori Cardill. And when we went down, I knew Lori <laughs> Cardill was going to be there. And her father... Bill Cordell was, is huge in Pittsburgh. Not only was he our horror host, I mean, everybody in our part of Pennsylvania knew who he was because he had um, He's Chili, Billy. Chili Billy in the Chiller Theater and 1130 back when, mm -hmm. before Saturday Night Live, so it's a very long time ago. And um, he was also a radio announcer. He was a TV news announcer. Everybody knew who he and, was. And he's in Night of the Living Dead. And he's in Night of the Living Dead as the, the announcer who starts telling you the phone numbers and places to go when the dead start coming back. The original Night of the Living Dead. Yeah. Correct. The black and white. 1968. Correct. Okay. The black and white one. Not the 90s version. Yeah. So we went down, and I had a T-shirt that my mom had actually found with me for, for me with Chili Billy's face on it. And we went to the Rock and Shock, and Lori just was so excited. And she called her father on the oh phone. It's like, God. this girl has your face on her chest. <laughs> and I don't know if you're going to keep that one in or not. But <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's tame. Then, Watch, listen to then, what I'm going to say right now. <laughs> and and I, so I talked to him for a couple minutes. And since no, then. No, no, no. You turned into a three year old girl first because she hands the phone to you. Oh, and I mean, you're who wouldn't like, though, really? You're like, you know, oh, hi, Miss Cardill. Yes, I was in the film, too. It's like, and here's my father. Hi, Mr. Cardill. Oh, shut up. <laughs> it's an honor to speak to you, oh, sir. Oh, see, I would have got all giddy. <laughs> so we've actually kind of become friends with Lori. When we go back to Pittsburgh, um, well, we don't go back very much anymore. But we can well, help it, yeah. <laughs> we used to go back to Pittsburgh. We'd actually go and see Lori and have lunch with her or something. Yeah. So. Cool. Oh, the McDonald's. So afterwards. Oh, wait, we can't. Yeah. We can't mention McDonald's. We can't mention it. Okay. So we went to a fast food place that has yellow arches. Can McDonald's, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no, so you guys won't tell me names, so I'm just going <laughs> to. So go ahead. But, but I actually have some of the pictures of it. We, I mean, because we were starving, but we thought, oh, it'll be really fun to leave our makeup on. So we went to a local McDonald's and just freaked everybody out there. And one of our friends said there were three of us who went. The guy I was dating at the time and his roommate. And what was his name? His name was Brett. And what was it? Brett. Brett. Mm-hmm. Brett Michael. Brett. Brett. <laughs> it was the 1980s and his name was Brett. <laughs> <laughs> and his roommate Tim. And Tim was like about six foot four. Mm -hmm. And who's now a newscaster down in West Virginia somewhere in Mogatel, West Virginia. And so we went into this McDonald's, and we were causing general mayhem because we had all our makeup on, and uh, we actually were. There we are were children to find still places. in therapy to this yes. day. Yes, actually, there was an yeah, older woman who's still in therapy because we scared her out of the McDonald's, um, and we tried to think of places where we could go to scare people with our makeup on. And at one time, we were up at a red light, and there was this poor guy, loosened up tie, had his suit on and everything. We pull up to the red light. And he just kind of looks over at us. And we started waving at him <laughs> through the window of the car. And he just grabbed onto the wheel. It turned green. And, and he wouldn't go. He wouldn't look over at us. He wouldn't go. <laughs> We're thinking, oh, I wonder how many he had before he got in the car. Mm -hmm. but, and then we ended up leaving. Uh, we scared some girls at a Mad Madonna concert that was in Pittsburgh. We started yelling stuff out the window. And they showed. They saw us. And we like, ah! and ran from the car. Good for you. Um, walked around a mall, and actually one of the police officers, the mall security that was there, was kind of like, you oh, yeah, guys are from the movie, aren't you? So they'd had other people, I guess, no. that were walking through, or like, yeah, no, we're actually going to eat your brains now. But, you know, so that was fun. Nice. Went around campus scaring people. Mm -hmm. And what have you done with your life? 
Uh, nothing on my hanger on. <laughs> just, just a leech. He married really. me for my, <laughs> my stardom. Well, no, that actually, it was a tie-in, because on, on our first date, uh, we went back to your place. You know, hey, Did now, you make a movie? Uh, <laughs> made a move. It's close enough. Okay. But uh, she's like, you know, on our first date, she's like, let me show you the time I ripped a guy's throat out. And we, she showed me the scene in Day of the Dead, and I was like, wow, I'm dating a zombie. That's pretty cool. And that's why we got married. Awesome, you know. So put the ring on her finger, put him. the finger back on the hand. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty cool. He does the artwork. Then, Don't let him kid you. He's had his own comic book stop. on the market before. And yeah, I yeah. was expecting to bring a picture of Doctor Who, you know, big Doctor Who fan. I was expecting some swag. I thought Mike would pass the word, but apparently he's a sucky co host. <laughs> 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 We didn't know yeah, he was going to be on tonight. That's what it was. I didn't know he was going to be on tonight either. There you go. So I, I can't blame him. Yeah. But he could have at least, you know, said, Why hey. Why you let him know. in? I didn't. She did. Oh. It's her fault. Oh. But okay. he is a Dutch fan. <laughs> yes, I, I, heard all about, I heard all about it. And Before we run out of time, I just want to make sure we get in where they can watch Sci-Fi Saturday. Well, they can listen to it. I'll listen to it. I'm sorry. Yep. Podcast. Just go to www.scifisaturdaynight.com. All the episodes are there. We're coming up on our 150th one. And uh, this week's guest, again, is uh, actor legendary Doug Jones. You can see our brain in the jar. Yes. This is illustrator X. Everybody expert. needs a brain in a jar. It's sure. true. It is true. Yep, we've had um, yeah. the two ladies from Holliston, yep. which is um, Cinemat? Showtime? No, Fearnet. Fearnet series. It is about two horror guys who are trying to do their own thing. Mm -hmm. Dee Snyder's in it. Dee Snyder's in it. Mm -hmm. Odorous Hurungus from Guar is in it. Yeah. <laughs> They're playing Rock and Chalk. Brian, Tracy, I want to thank you guys for coming on tonight. It was a, I had a blast. It was just fun just thank you talking about us. everything. And um, what's the? SciFiSaturdayNight.com. <laughs> I think. Say it again. Um, and we're on Facebook. Visit our page and uh, vote yes. in the real every week. Come like our, our Facebook page <laughs> and... Vote in the poll. We change the poll a week. And we have sci-fi questions, and we have horror questions, and comic book questions. Nerdy questions. And, Anything? Uh, oh. Oh, what? And we are all Boston Comic Con because we're Boston Comic Con. Right. Granite Con and of ComicArtHouse.com. Wow. See, I'm, I'm, I'm a loser. Visit Bob and Kim at ComicArtHouse.com <laughs> for all your comic book <laughs> art needs. <laughs> I have a rash I could show you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got anything to say before we close it up? Uh, is it He's in like set. a sci-fi no, shape? It's, it, you know, it could be something out of the thing. So we could make...